Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. You guys have been sending in a ton of scenarios. I have received at this point about 180 different scenarios. So I'm going to be busy for a while trying to figure out which ones are good, which ones are interesting to make a video out of, and which ones I can actually get around to doing. So if you have sent in yours, don't worry, I have received it. But keep in mind that it can take a while before I actually be able to make a video out of it, if at all. Now, this one from Tristan Z got a really good laugh out of me. The title is Western Spy. You are a Western spy who has entered the Russian Ship Design Bureau. Through much trickery and bribery, you have managed to design the next class of four battleships, which you have put such glaring flaws in that it will face one German battlecruiser and probably not win, despite the commanding admiral not being in it. I'm going to be playing Russia. So let's set that up. The year is 1935. The starting range is 20,000 meters. I'm going to be designing four battleships, but the battleships are <laughs> deliberately poorly designed. I'm going to be facing Germany in 1935. And the Germans will have one battlecruiser. That is it, one battlecruiser against my four battleships. Wind conditions. Designer, if you win, uh, you win if all battleships sink, despite your best efforts. Um, and I win if I sink the battlecruiser with at least one ship remaining. Oh, right. So if I'm interpreting this correctly, he has set up the scenario so that I can play it pretty much either way. Um, I can either play as the Germans and have one battlecruiser, but then the AI is going to create battleships for me, which I don't want. So I'm going to intentionally design a terrible battleship and actually try to lose against the German battleship. Oh, sorry, German battlecruiser. I'm going to have to design some really poor battleships. <laughs> this is going to be good. I like it when somebody really subverts the, uh, let's say, the type of ship that you can build or the type of ship that uh, you have to build for a scenario. Now... A terrible battleship that gets sunk by a battlecruiser. What are, what are these many bulkheads you speak of? Who needs that? Um. <laughs> Design a terrible battleship. Yeah, right. Um, I'm going to have as few upgrades as possible. While still having something that resembles a kind of workable battleship light shells on a battleship propellant well we're going to maximize it for he why not um hydraulic loaders or hydraulic turrets yep turn those things as slowly as you can and i'm not going to upgrade the reload speed either now then for a modern tower uh the modern tower one that is and the modern secondary tower um, funnels. I think a mega funnel just plunked down in the middle so you cannot put anything in front or behind it. And I have an engine efficiency of 23.5%. If that's not sabotaged, then I don't know what is. Now, anti-torpedo protection, sure, we're going to have anti-torpedo protection 1. Otherwise, the design might not be credible enough. And the, uh, the Soviet engineers are going to get very suspicious. I'm going to give it anti-flooding 1. And I'm going to give it an Armored Citadel, but nothing serious. Radio. Um, no, we don't need advanced radio telegraph. I have confidence in my Russian captains and their ability to do things without information from the main ship, from the flagship. Rangefinder. Well, we're going to go for a Coincidence Rangefinder. Uh, let's say it's going to be a Coincidence Rangefinder 4. Acoustics. Now nah, we got screening forces for that. Radar. No, this, this new technology called radar is something I wouldn't really place too much faith in. It's it's going to cause radiation and it's known to have severe impacts on your health. So, no. No radar or we're going to be melting our sailors. Can't have that. Main guns. Um, yes. I have heard that the Germans are not building any really serious ships. 
So I'd say a couple of uh, triple 11 inchers should be sufficient. And I wonder if I can put those in a forward firing orientation. Some parts are badly placed. Oh, you don't say. I think you will find that a lot of parts are going to be very badly placed, in fact. Uh, how can I turn this? Just remove it. You know what? They're, they're going to be single barrel. <laughs> We're going to make it worse. It'll get worse before it gets better. There we go. Doesn't that look like a Russian intimidating battleship right there? I'm going to plunk one on top of it. And that's going to be a single centerline 11 inch gun. There. Menacing Russian battleship. Very menacing indeed. Could I do the same thing on the stern? Well... I wonder if that 11 inch is going to fit. Not like that. Uh, could I... No, I don't really have the ability to position these much farther forward, <clears throat> I'm afraid. Or can I? Could I then drag the whole superstructure a bit farther forward? Yeah, a bit, not that much. Because then I can drag the secondary tower farther forward. And that should give me a bit more room to work with the standard superimposed barbette. And I can have another... Yeah, this is going to be some sort of monstrosity. There, now I just have to turn these turrets. One, two, starboard weight offsets, 38%, 11%, oh come on now. Turn directly aft, place down the second turret, click it, don't move it, not an inch. There we go. Now do the same thing for the bow. Point forward, select the other one. Spin it. In case you don't know how to spin stuff, press R. And that's the, the ideal way to point it forward. Now, I have heard that destroyers are a severe threat. And, well, what's better than a very, very fast-firing gun to deal with destroyers? We're going to need two-inch guns and lots and lots and lots of them. Because otherwise, those German destroyers are going to be a hell of a threat. Can't have that. So got to make sure that the ship is well protected. Especially against destroyers. Got to keep those torpedoes away. There. I feel much, much safer. The game is arguing that some of these turrets have, well, somewhat poor fields of fire, but this is all misinformation. I'm not going to take that seriously. I think that the game and the developers are trying to influence me. And not the game developers, you know. The, the, the engineers, they're trying to sort of discredit this whole design, which I think is nonsense. This is an excellent design, and don't let anybody ever tell you different. Now, just to top it all off, I'm going to have one single triple barrel on the stern, on the, the bow. And a single triple on the stern. In case you have destroyers approaching from the aft or the bow. Now, I have so many guns, and I have so much faith in Russian firepower that I do not believe that I need a lot of shells. I just need a few. And a few should be enough. Now, this is a very fast battleship at 36 knots. It can transit very, very long ranges. And uh, that's all with natural boilers, so we don't really have a lot of funnel capacity. But this is glorious Soviet engineering. We don't need a lot of funnel capacity. And don't let anybody tell you different. Now, um, we have a weight displacement of 38,000 tons out of 57,000. So I'm going to add a bit more belt armor. Not that much. Just, let's say, 15 and 7.5. And, and go for 7.5 inches of deck armor. And 3.7 deck extended. Conning tower to... Oh, I don't know, 13... Turrets to 15, turret tops to half of that, so that's 7.5 inches. And the secondaries. 
Well, these secondaries you see, these are very important. Because without these secondaries, I will be defenseless against destroyers. So I'm going to need some serious secondary defenses. I think they desire or deserve as much armament or armor as the main turrets. Right. Now, we have 17,000 tons left on this ship. And that is very useful because we can use that to transport prisoners of war. We can use that to transport um, additional people to the Gulag. We can use that to transport additional Soviet propaganda. This is fine. I don't feel like I have to maximize that. So, time to have the Archangel Gavril out on the naval or out on the seas and take down the Germans. A lot is going to come down to how well the AI designs their ships. <laughs> Modern funnel, Iowa. Yeah, you don't say. Status. Enemy spotted to the north. We shall proceed to the north. Uh, Sveto and Nikolai. Join Division 1. All ships. Formation abreast. All ships. Slow down to 24 knots until all ships are in proper formation. The enemy has engaged us. This cannot stand. Ready the 11-inch guns and the secondaries. We must take them down. We have 44,850 2-inch shells. No destroyer is going to get close. Although this is a hell of a destroyer if it's firing at this range. And yes, I know it's a battle cruiser, but play along, will you? I have to slow down farther, otherwise the Oriol, the Sviatoi, and the Synop will not be able to catch up to the Archangel. What is this phantom German ship? Where is it? We must find it. Sviatoi, join formation. Stop mucking about. Now just look at these. Well, secondaries. <laughs> oh, this thing. This thing right here. Uh, let me take a screenshot of that. <laughs> All the secondaries. Uh, is anybody not shooting so I can take a picture of your bow? Because you're going to be famous. Just maybe not in a good way. Maybe not in a good way. And again, Tristan, fantastic scenario. I really enjoy this. Intentionally build a terrible fleet. Because the fleet or the design bureau has been infiltrated. Now this battleship seemingly has no torpedoes, but it does have a few guns. Um, keep in mind, this battleship or battle cruiser has 12 guns. My Arkango <laughs> only has 6. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even shoot. Um, or at least not all of them. We have return fire from the other Congo. And it looks like the Nikolai already got hit. But it's not, the, it's not too serious. Now, bring me closer. I need to be in 2-inch range because I have been told that the 2-inch guns are fantastically effective against German battlecruisers. I know that they were good against destroyers, but German battle cruisers are supposedly particularly susceptible to those two-inch guns. Because they are all going to be laughing their asses off, and while they're laughing their asses off, they cannot shoot me. Or any of my ships. So, moving in. Reports say that the Archangel Gavril has taken some damage, but I say this is propaganda. Dispersed by the Germans and should not be trusted. The Archangel Gavril is in perfect condition. Synop, Oriol and Sviatoy are still trying to catch up. Oriol moving at 23 knots. This one's also at 23 knots. Guys, speed your ass up. I need a good formation. Range to the German warship. 14,700 meters. Identification forthcoming. Range on the secondaries, 2 inch, 5.5 kilometers. Just a bit more, and we'll tear that German battle cruiser to shreds. A 
Kangal Gavriel is taking more fire, but she doesn't care. She's a proud Soviet warship. She doesn't care about this damage. She's just going to keep going. Twelve kilometers. That is still seven kilometers short of those two-inch guns. Those two-inch guns have a reload of 4.7 seconds. They uh, put out a lot of fire and should be able to quickly sink the, the battle cruiser. At least so our German consultant has told us. Speaking of the German consultant, has anyone seen him lately? Because it's it's been a while since that guy designed these battleships for us, or helped us design these battleships, and he seems to have vanished since then. Has anyone seen him? Coincidentally, it happened just about when there was reports of a German battlecruiser sighted. And I find that timing a bit peculiar. It's... It's suspicious, I'll tell you that. Battlecruiser Wuppertal has been spotted and identified. This battlecruiser, if the Germans don't want to call it, has 13-inch guns, which can punch through at the current engagement range of 8 kilometers. They can punch through about 24 inches of belt armor and 5 inches of deck armor. Propellant high TNT. Their reload is 25 seconds. Which is slightly slower than my 11-inch guns. But not by much. The Wuppertal is defended at best by 13.3 inches of armor on the turret. And the propellant or propulsion is diesel 2. The ship has a very good citadel but not very good defenses against flooding. anti torpedo protection is fantastic. She has autoloaders and electrical turrets. Generation 2 radar, so don't worry. Before we get into range, all her sailors are going to get killed by the radiation which is caused by the radar. Or again, so our German consultant told us. Now we have done some significant damage to the Wuppertal. I just need to get closer because the secondaries are not yet firing. The five inch guns from the Wuppertal has now locked on to the Arkangel. The Arkangel Gavril is maneuvering closer. 7.1 kilometers out. The three inch should be firing pretty soon as its range is six and a half. That three inch is just the beginning of the demise of the Wuppertal. Come left. Formation. All Russian warships are now lined up. 3-inch gun acquiring the target. 3-inch gun firing. Tell you what, I would not want to be loading that 3-inch gun when an 11-inch goes off behind you. Good luck with that. And those 3-inch and 2-inch guns do not look like they have their own turret or their own little barbette under the deck. So good luck reloading all of those while you're... Well, not quite getting shot in the back, but while the 11 inch guns are firing from right behind you. Wuppertal currently down to 88%. Arkangul Gavril still going very, very proudly towards the enemy, 5.7 kilometers out. It's time to turn even more. We need to get those starboard secondaries to bear. Out of character, I'm actually quite worried that this battleship is still too capable of sinking that Wuppertal. I was very much hoping that the Germans would bring torpedoes. Because I am so weak against torpedoes. I can barely survive a single hit. But these guys... Well... The AI built a pretty shitty battleship. <laughs> or battlecruiser, not for the first time. Whoa! Look at that accuracy. 13% on the secondaries. All guns. Engage. Ish. Not angled enough. <laughs> the 
that parade of two inch guns. <laughs> yeah, this German spy has definitely done his job. That's for sure. The ship should be getting hit a lot, or at least shot at. 680, there we go. All the two inch guns are firing. Kangul Gavril is on fire, but this is nothing. Stop blowing holes in that German battle cruiser. I need it to sink me. Because if I if I sink the enemy, I lose the scenario, <laughs> which is really counterintuitive. Look at all these secondaries going off. I'm going to turn off the mains for a second. So we can get a better look at the secondaries. Ooh, it looks like some of them got roasted already. I wonder if we're actually doing damage with a two-inch gun against that battle cruiser. I don't believe so. Two-inch... Oh! Actually, two-inch guns have hit 30, 40... 45 times, they've done 1.3 damage. Impressive. This is surely going to be the demise of that ship. Alright, comrades, resume firing. This... <laughs> this battleship's too effective. Oh, she's flooding! Archangel Gavril is flooding. She has anti-flood one, but that is all. Looks like the bow compartment's taking on a bit of water. Accuracy on these guns is atrocious. You can just see shells going here, there, there. Ow. Good shot. Do it again. Oriol, you idiot. How hard is it to just maintain your position in the formation? All warships, detach. No, detach. Svietoy. That way. Oriol. Try to just evade if you can. Synop. Maintain course and increase speed. Synop, detach. Send up to flank. Push into the side of that war uh, warship. Arkangel Gavril is, <laughs> is actually flooding. But I still believe in the power of two-inch guns. I've hit the ship 205 times. I will have my damage. Just not done by the Arkangel Gavril, I think. The Wuppertal is also flooding, but she should have plenty of defenses in place. Although, she has anti-flood 1. And minima a few bulkheads. It's not as bad as the Archangel. Which is down to 30% buoyancy and dropping. Oh no. There goes the Wuppertal. See? Power of the 2-inch guns. I say the 2-inch guns are effective. I told you. And look at that, the battleship or the battle cruiser is almost done. This is all done by the two inch, mind you. This has nothing to do with that 1138 damage that I did with the 11 inch guns. That is lies. Lies and slander, I say. It's all the two inch guns. And as you can see, the two inch guns are exceptionally effective against destroyers as well, because I have seen no destroyers in this scenario whatsoever. So it is, just like the Elephant Spray, very effective at keeping destroyers away. Just as effective as the Elephant Spray is at keeping the elephants away. See? I told you the 2-inch guns were a fantastic idea. I do, however, believe that the Wuppertal 
is not going to survive this encounter with the two-inch guns. I think, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Um, this means I actually lost the scenario, believe it or not. <laughs> yes, I, I won the battle, but I, I failed the scenario. Um, the designer, you win if all the battleships sink despite your best efforts. Uh, you win if you sink the battle cruiser with at least one ship remaining. So I suppose that I won as the battle as the the admiral of the fleet, but I lost as the designer of the battle ships. Oh well, this was a very fun scenario for me to do. Um, if you have something that's completely outside the realm of uh, build five cruisers and and do this or take on that particular historical battle. Fantastic. This is the stuff that I really enjoy because it's way out of the box. It's way beyond the normal and it just makes it really, really fun. So, Tristan, thank you very much. If your creative brain has any more scenarios like these, be sure to send them in. And um, as for the rest of you, send in your scenarios through the link down below in the description. I do not take any more suggestions from the comment section. And as I mentioned at the start, there are a lot of comments or a lot of uh, scenarios being sent in. Which means that I'm trying to get most of them, or I'm trying to have a look at them and, and perform them, but they're coming in faster than I can put out my videos. So it might take a while before your scenario gets picked. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the German interference in the design bureau of the Russian Navy. And I shall see you guys soon for another episode.